coming to you with the Perks of Perkins. If you would like to type in that Google address here at the bottom of the first screen, it'll allow you access to uh, the slideshow itself, and you sure can share it out or use it and uh, um, whatever benefits you. I am Tammy Cheatham and I am the Perkins coordinator for ESU 8. I am going to just kind of walk you through some of the, the steps to Perkins. A lot of you, if you are a veteran teacher, you probably already know all of this, but if you are a new teacher, it'll kind of give you a little bit of a glimpse into um, what can be offered to you. We are in a consortium with ESU 1 and 17 and 8. And they each have their own money, but we collaborate together to write the grant and then we share um, some of our trainings so that way it benefits um, a bigger uh, array of teachers. With the Perkins funds, a lot of our money goes to different places and it's we try to make sure that it's always used back for students and for teachers. The NCAP is a Northeast Nebraska Community Action Partnership. A lot of those funds will go into actually NECC um, they work um, very diligently to offer things to your kids and uh, get those programs out there that are in need. So they are a great uh, partner to have. The Cole Conference is uh, those, that conference for school counselors, the Cole Counselor Optimal Learning Day. This year we focused on mental health and mental wellness. It's usually at the end of January. We had 54 counselors that were registered and we had um, presenters. We had uh, two, three people from the different agencies, Heartland Counseling and then Associated Psychologists and Counselors from Norfolk, and we had Cheryl Krakemeyer who was a counselor at Wisner Pilger. We heard really great things about this, so we want to continue to make sure that these days are used specifically for you and what your, your needs are. The project-based learning is something new this year. We had applications and um, we selected teams of teachers, and we have seven teams. Six teams are from ESU 8, and one team is from ESU 1. And then we have been meeting with them um, throughout the school year. We um, met with them in November and February and then March. And they are creating projects together and um, using them for their students. They can also apply for up to $2,000 per team for equipment that they might need to carry out this project. So we're anxious to see what those all um, entail at the very end of the year. The blended has been something that's been around for a couple of years. Um, so we are still sustaining this by going in and providing that support to the teachers in the, in the um, various schools. Professional development grants, these are um, funds that are available to CTE teachers and you can use these this money to apply to go to state conferences national conferences um, they're, they're used for registration fees for travel for your lodging and it's up to a thousand dollars per teacher now you don't have to use the whole thousand dollars. Let's say if you want to go to the NCE conference that's coming up in June, you can put in um, a requisition for that. I have a Google form. If you're not getting that, make sure to let me know and I'll send it out to you. So let's say you put in your registration fee is $350. Your hotel room is going to be $210 for two nights. Um, you're going to have some meals expenses in there. So you'll, you'll put in to kind of estimate about that, and then when you actually go to the conference, make sure you save all of your receipts, and your um, business manager and you can fill out the federal reimbursement form that's found on ESU 8's webpage, and then you're gonna get that money back. Let's say that you decide that, oh, you know, there's one more conference that I wanna go to. Um, so you can reapply, put in for that, make sure you're detailed, and then um, you will be more than likely awarded that money. You just cannot go over a thousand dollars, but it can be for two or more um, registrations um, by June fifteenth, I believe, is when that deadline is. The special project grants; um, those are up to three thousand dollars per project. 
So we want to make sure that those are, um, they can be a new program or an existing program that you're wanting to try new and inventive ways um, to use um, technology. You can also use, um, you know, purchase materials for that. So it's just, um, it's real important that you're detailed with that. We'll talk about that application process here in a little bit. Again, in order to um, get credit for a program of study, if you're a participant, the student takes one semester of a CTE class. If they are a concentrator, they take three semesters of a CTE class in the same program of study. If you click on this Perkins resource site link, take you out here to this page, and I just wanted to show you the programs of study. If you click on programs of study, it has all the different programs of study listed over here. So if you want to go and say, you know, I want to go and see if my school has a health science program of study. Look for things that you already have. You know, look down this list, the sequence of the CTE classes. Maybe you say, you know what, I do um, right here, we do health sciences. So you look over here, you have to take the introduction course is a health science one, intermediate health science two, and capstone course is health science three. So make sure that you follow that procedure. Sometimes a capstone course might be a dual credit class. So um, just make sure, again, if you, if you have any confusion, I'm more than happy to come out and help you do this. It's really important that the codes are put in correctly because that way then your information system at your school will um, you know, automatically run some of those reports and make sure that they put in your participants and your concentrators for you. So um, again, don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Look, into see, look to see in your schools what courses you're already offering and see maybe if you need to get a capstone course. You know, maybe that's what you're missing. So we can go and make sure we look and see, and, yep, I, we can offer that, we can make that work. So those are real important to um, do for your kids. Give you a minute to read this slide. I would say CTE courses really have been really, I would say, popular the last five to ten years. They've always been there, but now there's really the push. Um, you know, we see from um, community members, from business people, from um, industries, factories, that there's, you know, the shortage of, of workers coming out. Um, and so, you know, they want skilled workers. They want workers that maybe have a one-year degree, two-year degree. Um, and these, these, you know, degrees are helping students and people earn good money and we want those back in our communities and whether they're a large community or a small community there's always a need for um, the CTE type workers so I think it's important that we you know make sure that our kids get to explore this and know what's all out there with their Perkins application that application will be sent out probably late spring and you're going to get a form and you can be as creative as you want. Uh, maybe you want to um, help to, you know, boost an existing program. That is fine too. You're just going to have to make sure that everything's very detailed. Um, don't leave anything out. Take a look at what all the requirements are. Make sure that you tell me the amount that you're requesting. Make sure that you let me know if it's a new or existing program. What program of study does it follow? Um, really give me a good project description. The innovation, where does the innovative part come in your, in your um, request for some funds? Are you forming a partnership outside in your community? Um, what area? Is it a business? Um, you know, is it something that, that will benefit your town? Let, let me know that. If you need any professional development, make sure that you put that in there. Um, because we can cover expenses for you to go to a training. You know, maybe it's a three-day training, two-day training. But we'll take that in consideration when um, you are putting in your application. And make sure to put an itemized budget list. And then the most, uh, the last thing is the district support. 
If you are applying for, let's say, the full $3,000, and when you add up your budget list and it comes up to $4,000, it's over budget, but you need to make sure and talk to your district administrator to see, is this something that the district is willing to cover that extra $1,000 expense? So that's why you want to make sure they have their support. Because I work so closely with the teachers that are um, putting these applications together, I am not on the team to um, score this. So there is a rubric, and if you click on this link, it will be taken out to the rubric. And you can kind of see exactly what um, you're going to be judged on and graded on. So it's not a surprise. But again, um, there's a team of people that help score this, so that way I... Um, can remain impartial and help you work through this to the best of my ability. So when we think about YCTE classes and courses, well, when we start looking, you know, at the dropout rate, a lot of these kids said if they had the CTE courses that they would have stayed in school. Um, so many times, again, you know, we think that as a CTE, CTE teacher, that we get a lot of the kids that are, you know, um, can't sit still, need something to do, don't get things in, but a lot of those kids need that hands-on and they need to know that reason why. Um, so this helps them when they get to thinking about post-secondary education. So um, these classes would have kept some of those dropouts in school. So you are a very important part of their education. Big concept here. There are uh, nine required uses for the local funds. And this guide is going to help you if you are trying to um, enhance your programs, maybe go through some programs of study. Um, these, there are nine uses of the funds. But then underneath, it talks about the strategies or be best practices that might help you get to there. And again, we're seeing a lot of them want to tie in that academic and technical side of classes, so it's important to um, you know make a partnership with the your core teachers as well. This document that I linked in here is the allowable uses of funds and the non-allowable uses of funds. I get a lot of calls for this, and I just always tell people too that sometimes I can answer them right away. But if it if it gets to be kind of a gray area, I um, send this request on to the Perkins State Coordinator in Lincoln and then I make sure that they give me the yes or the no before I um, tell you that it's okay and then to find out only that it's not. So if you click on this link you can see down here um, the different uses for Perkins. Like if you just look here and see um, it's not to be used for promotional items. They're not approvable. Um, not for basic tools. And you can look at your chisels, clamps, gardening tools. They're not allowable. Um, they want you to make sure that um, if it's part of an innovative program, that this is um, their state-of-the-art equipment tools, or maybe more of even like an industrial type tool. So, so that gets to be a little bit more where we have to really make sure that we're um, doing what we need to do. So again, this is just a nice document to have. So make sure. Yep. Okay, the advisory council. We um, put together an advisory council, and obviously the first thing is, is to advise us, advise us what direction they maybe would like to see um, the our. Uh, program go. They help to assist and to support an advocate. So we try to get members selected from all different um, realms of um, experience. We look for the geographical sections of our schools that we serve. We look at all types of business and industry. We look at both labor and the management side of things. Um, we try to do job service personnel. Um, even look into, I have some government officials, like we might have somebody from um, NDE set on our team just to make sure that if there's any new information we get that information. We try to have students or former students so that way they can advise maybe to see you know well, this would be better I've been in these classes and what about this um, you know these young students they're, they're not limited by anything and we also try to get some parents of students on there so um, if you get a call 
and uh, are asked to be sitting on uh, our advisory council, you know, think about it. We, we try to rotate that so that way you're not stuck on it for life. This is something that um, the issues 9, 10, 11 collaborate to do this day. We were going to go and sit in on this day out at Kearney, but unfortunately our lovely Nebraska winter weather had other plans, so this day got canceled. They are putting together a day and they get lots of different people from lots of um, different areas. Like they might have some people from NDE and they might have some people that are out in their um, business world, in their industry, in their communities. And then there's different breakout sessions. So I think this is going to be a very um, integral part of what we want to do and kind of where we want to go with, with some things here with ESU 1, 8, and 17. And so we are going to try to meet with Kelly Clapp from ESU 9, and we're going to do a Zoom conference with her to kind of pick her brain about how this process gets started, what's it going to take to implement, um, how it's going to be sustained. So um, you can see there are good things are coming. I'm really excited about this. And February is CTE month. So I got this video off of um, the Nebraska website. And I would encourage you to have your students put together a little bit of a video clip to promote CTE classes in your school. Maybe if there's a teacher that wants to um, get in on the fun, you can do that also and submit these to um, the Nebraska Department of Ed site. And they're going to compile the very best at the end of the month. So I think it'll be interesting to see if any of our schools in Northeast Nebraska um, get selected. February's National Career and Technical Education Month. At the Nebraska Department of Education, we're proud of the wide variety of CTE opportunities available to students throughout the state. To kick off CTE Month, we want your help showcasing it to the rest of the nation with a Show Us Your CTE video. Grab your phone and make some videos, 30 seconds or less, that highlight what CTE looks like in your school, classroom, or community. Then tweet out your video using the hashtag NECTE now through February 20th. Some possible prompts to get you started might be... What CTE means to me. CTE has helped me by... I love CTE because... CTE in the community looks like... CTE in our school looks like... And don't forget to add a geo filter for your school or community to let people know where you are. At the end of the month, we'll compile the best videos to promote CTE all year long. Thank you and have fun showcasing CTE. So like I said, I think that would be exciting if some of our schools submit these and, and we get selected. So good luck. So I think, remember again, per Perkins is in the center. Um, it provides um, some of the resources, the funds that, that you may need um, to support and enhance and start um, different projects in your CTE classes and also links and bridges the community because that's important to make sure that the community knows what's going on inside of our schools and how we're working to make sure that we have responsible citizens that are going to go out and be able to um, hold the jobs and uh, contribute to um, the community that they live in. So reviewing some concepts, we talked about the uses of the Perkins Fund, so you kind of know where some of your money is going to sp be spent. We talked about CTE courses and the benefits to all students taking those. Uh, we looked at the application, what needs to be on that for um, later this spring. You get uh, access to the rubric. Those nine uses that were required for the Perkins. You have a resource for allowable, non-allowable use of funds. And you got to see a little bit how we select people for our advisory council. And again, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to um, reach out to you about Perkins. Again, some of you are veteran teachers and you're like, ah, oh, this is old hat. For those of you that are new, um, you just kind of giving you a little bit of a sample and make sure that, you know, reach out to me. I am here. I'll take any questions. If I don't know the answer, I will sure reach out to find that answer and get back to you as soon as I can. You can find me at the email below. You can call me at ESU. Um, I, am, I am here to work for you, and I would love to get out in your schools and see some things that you're doing and help you um, try to, you know, problem solve and, and uh, take the next step forward in your CTE program.